So uh, good evening, everybody. <laughs> My name is uh, Chris Schaefer. I'm the planning manager for the city of Fullerton. I'd like to introduce some of the staff that are here today. We have Sunaina Thomas, who's the director of community and economic development. We have Edgardo Caldera, who's our senior planner. Nicholas Monti, who's our, our planning tech. And Taylor Samuelson, who's our, uh, our economic analyst. And then I'd also like to introduce to you uh, Lily Rudolph, who's our consultant from the Rincon Consultant Group. So I want to thank you for coming out tonight. Um, as you're aware, this has been a process that has started a few years ago, and it's been dragging on for a little bit. So we really appreciate your time, and thank you for coming tonight. So just to introduce um, the slides, we have an agenda. So our agenda is listed above, and so we're going to do a housing element overview, um, some background. We're going to talk about the RENA. The RENA is our, our goal of units that we need to provide over the next um, cycle. And then um, we're going to give you some updates on the housing element. And at the end of this whole thing, uh, we're going to allow you to ask questions. But due to the amount of people that are here, we're going to limit you to two minutes. Having said that, if you don't get your question in today, my business card is on the back table. And you can shoot me an email with a question or a comment or whatever you have at, at any time. Um, so we are looking for those comments. Um, Last thing I want to uh, announce is we're, we're not going to be talking about the housing incentive overlay zone. It's called the HIAZ. The HIAZ will be taken at a future meeting as a public hearing. And so if you're here specifically to talk about the HIAZ, we're not going to get into that level of detail. That'll be a future meeting because it's very technical. There's a lot of details that need to be discussed, and we really can't do it justice tonight. So uh, was anybody here just to talk about the HIAZ? I just want to see if there's any hands. Okay. All right. So at this time, I'm going to hand this over to Lily, and she'll do the presentation. Thank you, Chris. Let's see here. So uh, as, as Chris mentioned, my name is Lily Rudolph. I'm with Rencon Consultants, and our team has been assisting the city, Chris's team, with preparing the housing element to comply with state housing law. So this might get a little technical, um, I'll, but we can, we can go through it, and then really the purpose of the, tonight is to make sure that you're all aware of what is happening here to allow the opportunity for you to provide comments either here tonight or um, in writing, and we can take those comments and, um, and address them in the next revision of the housing element that we will send to the state. So, so with that, so what, what is a housing element? So the housing element is part of the city's general plan. It's a required element. So every city and county in California is required to um, have a housing element. And the purpose is to provide housing opportunities for the city. So um, it has to be unlike any of the other elements of the general plan, it does need to be certified by the state, which is really the toughest part of this whole process. And it has to be updated every eight years, which is also um, sort of not, not typical for a general plan element. So uh, this housing element that we're preparing now has a planning period of 2021 to 2029. So, you know, right now we're in 2024, so we are, are trying to catch up uh, because, as, as you can see, we are actually in the planning period that we are planning for right now. So there are several components of a housing element. Um, <clears throat> it includes a housing needs assessment. So what this section does is examines the city's demographics and the housing stock characteristics. So there's a lot of census data. This information provides a foundation to understand the city's current and future housing needs. Um, it also includes an analysis of fair housing concerns that's focused on equal access to opportunities. This is a new section in the housing element that's part of the housing elements that we're preparing now for this 2021-2029 cycle. Um, 
There's also a section for identifying housing constraints. So this is a section that describes why all housing or certain types of housing might not be easy to build. And there might be a number of reasons why there are constraints in place. Some of them are governmental. So for example, the, the permitting process is just too uh, cumbersome or it's too expensive or the development standards um, don't allow for the densities that are allowed in a certain zone. But there are also environmental constraints um, like if, there, if sites are in flood hazard areas or wildfire hazard areas, for example, um, and there are all the, also infrastructure um, constraints. So this, this section in the housing element, which is it's out for public review now, it's on the city's website, um, discusses all of those constraints to building housing in Fullerton. Uh, there's also a section that identifies housing resources. Um, that are available for affordable housing development. So that includes locations that are suitable for housing development. And, and that's what's known as the site's inventory. So that's the map that you see in the housing element that has um, all the potential sites for, um, for future residential development. And at the very end, there's the housing element, there's a plan. It's, um, and that, that plan achieves the city's housing goals and it includes policies, action items, and timelines, and that's what the state really holds the city to. So once we get the, this whole housing element certified by the state, the city is, is now committed to um, implementing these, these goals um, that are described in the housing plan. So, um, let me multitask here. So starting with the regional housing needs allocation, you'll, you'll hear this a lot. It's, uh, we call it the RENA for short. So it's a determination of existing and future housing needs for each city and county in California for the life of the housing element. So it's, the RENA is the number of housing units that each city needs to plan for. Not, not to build, not to, you know, create, but, but they need to be able to plan for the number of units that is, um, <clears throat> that is in the city's arena. So it starts at the state level. So the state says that, you know, um, in California during this planning period, uh, we need to uh, accommodate X number of, of housing units. And then that gets allocated to, um, to each of the metropolitan planning organizations. So, so in Fullerton, we're part of the SCAG region, which is the Southern California Association of Government. So that's just a bunch of cities and counties that are within Southern California. And so SCAG, which is this regional planning agency, further allocates those units among all the um, cities and counties in, um, in the SCAG region. So, and that, the, the number of units is based on population projections, income distribution, and access to jobs. So this is Fullerton's RENA breakdown. Um, one thing I didn't mention earlier is that in addition to just sort of the number of units, it's further broken down by income category. So you can see here that um, Fullerton needs to plan for um, you know, a total of 13,209 units, and that's broken down by very low income, low income, moderate, and above moderate income units. And, and Hello. The percentage are also uh, broken down. Here. Sorry about the mic. <clears throat> okay, so so as I mentioned, the housing element must be updated every eight years, and the first draft was actually submitted to HCD in November 2021. And HCD, so HCD is the State uh, Housing and Community Development Department. It's the agency that reviews every single housing element that is prepared for every single city and county in the state. So uh, they're doing a lot of reviewing of, of all the housing elements and all the iterations of the housing element. So, so um, the city of Fullerton received a letter from HCD with basically a, a list of items that need to be revised in order to make the housing element comply with state housing law. Um, at that point, the, um, the consultant who was preparing the housing element at the time retired, um, terminated his contract in February 2022. Um, there was a lot of staff turnover, 
And so the housing element kind of went into limbo for a while. And then in September 2022, um, the city retained my firm, Rincon, to pick it back up. And so we've been drafting and working with HCD and working with the city to update it ever since. And so now we're at the point where we prepare to draft. It's, it's out for public review. After we receive your comments, we will um, we'll re review all your comments incorporate them into the housing element and send it off to HCD and, and hope to um, you know, get, some, get closer to, uh, to certification. So, so what we've done so far is a big, a big focus is affirmatively furthering fair housing. And um, this is, again, a, a new section for the housing element. So there's been a lot of work, a lot of sort of um, updates to this section that just wasn't included before because it just wasn't really analyzed before. So, and the reason for that is uh, the state passed uh, what's called Assembly Bill 686 to expand upon the fair housing um, and created new requir requirements that apply to all housing elements that are due during this time period. So it requires that all state and local agencies facilitate deliberate actions to explicitly address, combat, and relieve disparities resulting from past patterns of segregation to foster more inclusive communities. So it requires a really detailed analysis in every single housing element for this, for this cycle. Excuse me? Um, I think if we can take questions at the end, I'm not quite sure if I can answer that question completely without some back and forth. Um, so another section that we spent some quite quite a time, um, quite a bit of time updating is the housing plan. So this outlines the goals, policies, and programs that the city will commit to. And um, so we added programs that would hold the city to review and update the development review process to support the development of a variety of housing types, to support the production of regulated affordable housing for all income levels, um, homeless prevention and housing, tenant protection and support. Um, and, and then we needed to add sort of language to strengthen each of those programs by adding objectives and timelines and clarification where it was needed. So for the uh, land resources section, so this also includes the sites inventory. So we limited the sites inventory. If you compare the, the previous sites inventory with the sites inventory that is in this draft, um, we limited the, the number of sites and the units uh, to those that could realistically support the development capacity that was proposed. Um, oftentimes we submit sites inventories to HCD and they look at this list of sites and they say there's no way this site could ever accommodate housing, um, provide justification, provide justification to the point to where you know it, it, we, it may be easier just to say yes, it, it doesn't make sense, we don't really need to include it because we have plenty of sites and so we'll just remove it. So we went through and systematically kind of cleaned it up so that it just made more sense. Um, and then, and as you probably know, so the city is concurrently developing the high Oz, and so we are are limiting our sites inventory to to some of the sites in the high Oz, as well as um, some surplus land that the city owns that um, the city can commit to um, to to uh, passing off to an affordable housing developer for affordable housing. Um, previously, there are religious institution sites and. Those were all removed from the site's inventory because um, it, they were hard to justify. Uh, it, it doesn't preclude any future residential development in these sites, but for the purposes of the, the housing site's inventory, we just we want to keep it tight. Um, so those were removed. And then we made assumptions for the projected accessory dwelling units, um, also referred to as ADUs, that may be constructed during the planning period. So, um, so SCAG has a formula for taking all the ADUs that have been um, permitted in the past, and then we can base sort of projections on the past permits that were approved for ADUs to, to make assumptions for um, future ADUs. So, so the next steps is um, the 
The housing element is currently posted on the website. Uh, the, the public comment period goes until January 26th, so um, we welcome and encourage written comments. And we'll submit the housing element to HCD uh, no later than March 25th. Um, also, you know, so we're, we're preparing several housing elements throughout the state, and it's not a hard deadline um, to submit by if you're able to submit on Monday, we can still accept those comments and we'll have time to incorporate those comments into the housing element, if that, if that helps. Um, and, and as Chris mentioned, there will be a lot more back and forth. We're going to submit to HCD and we expect you know, several pages of comments from HCD, and so this is going to be going on for, for several months. I mean, as you can see here, as far as next steps, um, we are planning to take this to adoption in September and November 2024, so between now and then, the housing element that is online now will probably look pretty different than, uh, than what it'll look like once it's adopted or once, it's, um, once we prepare it for adoption. So, um, so that actually concludes my presentation. We're, we're really, I wanted to give you this background so, so you're familiar with sort of what we're doing here, but we're really here because we wanna hear from you. So I'll be taking notes as you speak and provide oral comments. I'll try to answer questions as much as I can. And for questions that I'm not able to answer tonight, I will write them down and um, provide Chris with a summary of, of the responses that we can post on the city website.